Hello YouTube and welcome to a little bit of a hobby update video. So it's Saturday and I'm just busy uh, working on some of my um, bases actually. Uh, if you look at the blog you'll see that I've been on a bit of an assembling binge. So you can see bits and pieces here. There's terminators. They're only tacked to, with super glue to the bases so they're not stuck there for good. Um, and then we've got you know some death watch kill team. That's a death watch kill team guy over there. And um, I've also been working on some uh, heresy marines. Now I decided to change my basing scheme for my heresy uh, marines, for my um, 30k ultramarines and I decided to go for a sort of trench works kind of thing. So what I've done here as you can see is here's an example of one of the bases I've worked on. So what I've been doing is uh, taking a blank base and just populating with some items first. So what I've done there is a bit of a trench board as you can see and then some uh, broken up bricks then I've done uh, a, what a, a, uh, I use my junior hacksaw to uh, chop up a, a helmet so it looks like it's stuck in the mud and there's just bits of uh, uh, sand strewn around that so basically PVA across the whole thing bits and pieces scattered around it to give it a little bit of a narrative a bit of movement and a bit of population and then what I can do is paint up uh, the base uh, and then stick the dude on top so what will happen is um, I'll obviously base go to black after which I'll uh, paint up the the base and then hopefully it'll it'll look really really sharp. Now I can paint that helmet up any color I want so I can either paint it up the color of my ultramarines because it's going with my ultramarines so it's one of his fallen comrades helmet or someone who's discarded a helmet or alternatively I can paint it up an enemy force if I really want to. Um, and then uh, the idea is just to provide bases that are slightly more alive uh, and narratively rich and I think now that we're on the 32 millimeter bases um, we just have a lot more freedom to do things like that so it's pretty pretty good what you can see here these are the ones for my death watch kill team so here I've gone for more of an urban design so um, I've done I've used corkboard to do kind of like paving slab like a road and then um, I've used just you know just a regular kind of drinking straw um, I used for the for, incidentally for the for the planking for the board for the trench boards I just use coffee stirrers you know you get them from from Costa coffee or Starbucks or wherever you drink your coffee every time you go and grab a bunch um, you end up with a supply and I mean they're easy to get so all I've done so there you can see I've used a bit of brick um, which is from Pegasus Hobbies large bricks you break them up you know to turn them into rubble and they look pretty good um, and you know there's a nice element of three dimensionality to it and then you can place your miniature wherever you want on that um, once it's done and then here what I've done I've used corkboard tiles uh, just snapping them up into random shapes uh, pop them on to cover most of the base and then what I've done is just to um, uh, put a straw, half a straw in as a pipe and then a little bit of uh, grit along along the edge here just to show kind of rubble and then what I might do with this one and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do it yet is to try and do a kind of water effect so maybe make it look a bit watery so what I'll probably do is paint it a kind of dirty muddy colour and then give it a kind of either gloss varnish to make it look like it's wet or um, if I'm feeling really really uh, uh, you know um, sort of adventurous if I was to not obviously not in this case but what I would do is if I was to sort of put a hole like a dip within the cork board I could then fill it with a little bit of um, uh, I think once you seal it you fill it with a bit of water effects and here's another one where I've just you know done a very similar thing so you can see cracked paving slabs and what I'll do once this one is set once the paint is uh, the sorry the PVA glue is set I can fill in some of the gaps with a bit of um, grit just to make it look a bit more rubbly uh, but the idea here is that this is an urban area where you know roads are buckling the pipes bursting and here's another one they won't all have pipes I guarantee you um, but here's another one for instance you can see you know I did a little bit of kind of a brass rod there to kind of look like a rebar, um, a, a shattered pipe, you know, that's all bent and mangled. Um, and these will go with my Death Watch kill team. So um, I'm using really simple tools, bit of bits of cork board, uh, stuff from my bits box that I don't need, uh, drinking straws, um, you know, coffee stirrers, and a bit of PVA glue. It's nothing major, it's nothing super clever, it's just to kind of pr provide a little bit of um, interest on the base itself. Um, so uh, that's what I've been up to today. Um, as you can see, I'm on. It just those who don't read the blog, you know, I am I am assembling stuff like crazy. The idea is to get stuff out of the boxes, get it assembled, get it base coated, so that I can take stock of where I really am in terms of um, you know uh, 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 my armies and and uh, sort of just move things forward. And to that end, also today, what I've done is I've um, I bought some dowling from home base I think it cost me five quid for a really long piece this is 16 mil um, dowling rod um, and as you can see what I've done here this guy's not quite stuck to it yet but what I've done is oh, let me just pry him off um, what I've done is I've got a little there's a little 
Let me see if I can just get it to focus. There's a little hole in the top there. You don't have to have the hole, but you tack your miniature to the top of this um, rod, and then he sits into a little box I've made, uh, and you can see he's got a uh, bit of rod in his foot, and I can cut that off when I'm done with him. And it, what it allows me to do, and I'll just show you this quickly, by, oops, excuse the hands, right. And the idea is just that, obviously, he's not stuck to it now, but what I can do is, um, once he is stuck and he's static, I can manipulate the miniature, uh, paint paint the angles I want without the base getting in the way, um, and then also, uh, for ease of base coating, you know, obviously all I have to do is pop this inside the box I've made, base coat with my airbrush and I'm good to go, but it's just a way of um, being able to manipulate the miniature and handle it without actually touching the miniature or touching a base, because obviously if I'm going for a scenic base, what I really don't want is uh, my, my hands messing up my hard work. So I built this box, and all it is is a box. I've punched some holes in the top using a knife rather crudely, and I've got these dowel rods that I've cut sort of certain length, as I say, as a, as a kind of handle to to manipulate the miniature when I'm painting it, and that just goes in there. Um, this one's just got for eight at the minute, and then what we can do is if I can just what I'll do is if you hang on one second, I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, the the old sponge actually slots the the pegs in quite neatly. I've just I've uh, sort of jippoed that a little bit so it works properly, and so th this just lines up with the top and like that. So um, the pegs the pegs sit through the top and into there, and what it stops it stops them from tilting around too much. And the idea is just to keep this box on my desk so I can paint the miniature when I want to leave it to dry. Maybe if I've done a wash or something like that, pop it in the box, carry on with another one, and I'm good to go. So I can have eight miniatures on the go at one time. Uh, this is a very unsophisticated system, as you can see. All I did is I used materials that are to hand. Uh, if you want to be more fancy, you know, get a plank of wood or something and, and bore holes in it that are the right diameter. Um, but the key thing is just as a peg system so that I can put my miniatures down when I don't want to handle them without them, you know, uh, rolling around or falling over or anything like that. Because in the past, I've used things like paint, uh, paint pots. Um, and in fact, I can give you an example. I've used things like paint pots, and like while it's great for a miniature like this because it's made of plastic and so on, it's not going to fall over. But the problem with miniature, uh, some of the old metal miniatures, is they do tip over quite easily, or you knock them over, that kind of thing. Whereas with this system, you know, it lives in there, and and it's not going anywhere. I mean, this this box, I can just put it somewhere safe, and I'm good to go when I want to keep the miniatures out of the way. So um, I'm, as I say, I'm trying to get a lot of things done today. Just trying to move forward, push my projects forward. Um, get a bit of momentum going. January is usually a good month for me. Um, I've actually got some stuff done which I will share with you in my next video. Uh, I just want to thank you all for watching. I hope some of this has been useful to those who kind of need it or find find it find it useful. Um, as you can see, I've got Death Watch Kill Team and I've got some Horus Heresy things going on, uh, and uh, I'm I'm really excited about 2016 as a year of the hobby. Really, thanks for watching.